Okay, project milestone three has two parts. One is creating an abstract base class. Actually, it's, yeah, it's an abstract base class. It's not an interface because it has some functionalities in it. Okay, so it is an abstract base class, but not an interface. So the read writable module over there, it has, let me just uh, open it up and take a look at it to make sure that I am giving proper information on it. It has a query, to a query and a modifier in it, if I recall correctly. So I'm waiting for it to load. Give me a second. <clears throat> All right. So milestone three. And we are talking about read writable. Okay, so read writable, it has one flag in it. That flag tells if it's supposed to read and write in comma separated value format, or it should read and write using a form format. A form format is data entry from console with prompts and everything. A comma separated value readout, it means it reads with no interaction with user. So the read write based on the flag of IO stream will flip to two different ways of reading. So essentially, in your reads, you have an if statement says, if it's comma separated, read like this. If it's not, read like that. OK? Same thing with the write. Wherever you are writing these things, you say, if it's comma separated, uh, if it's comma separated, write like this or write like that. OK? So all right. Call that flag whatever you want. <clears throat> and. Uh, Read writable has, uh, um, uh, let me see, what does it have? So when uh, the flag is created, flag by default is set to false. Accomplish it any way you want. Create a constructor, set it to a value. So it is false by default, OK, unless you set it to something else. Then you have two methods in here that are not virtual. One is called is uh, CSV, which returns true or false if the flag is uh, a comma separated value. And the other one sets that value. So essentially gets a Boolean value and sets the comma separated value to uh, the value that is needed. So that's that. So these are the only th uh, two uh, solid function, uh, functions that it has. So it has a no argument constructor, sets the comma separate value to false. The destructor, an empty destructor, you know, a virtual destructor. Is CSV, returns if it's in a comma separate value uh, um, format, and mm, the other one sets it. Then you have a read and write. The reason we are not saying what the signature of read and write is, the, the reason is that at the top of the project, we told you any place we say read and write, this is the signature for it. So go up there, and you'll see exactly what it is. So you create two pure virtual functions for read and write, uh, and you implement the insertion and extraction operator overload based on those pure, pure virtual functions in the CPP section of the read write. So read write, although it doesn't have an implemented read and write, but it implements uh, the uh, helper extraction and insertion operator based on those reading and writing, the standard way that you do it. Remember I told you with your eyes closed, you should be able to overload insertion and extraction. That's how you do it, OK? So any example that I have done, you open it up, the solution for it is there, because it's essentially the same thing. If you feel you want to have other, all the classes that you create over here, if you want to add bells and whistles to make your life easier, add any functions you want to it, no problem. Any attributes you want to. We give you the bare minimum thing that you need to make this thing happen. If you think anything else is needed, 
do it and make sure you comment about it at the top. I added this and that. Usually, if you are creating functions that are not used with children, you should either um, are are not used with children. It's only used with this class to do uh, some dirty work that it's supposed to do. You make it private. If you have functions that are only used by children, you make it protected. Okay. Public methods, I don't know why you want to create it because I am the person. No, actually, you are the person who's writing the main. So, yeah, so you can create public methods if you feel something is going to be needed in future in your main application, the parking. <clears throat> Again, remember, you can always come back and change your previous milestones. Your submission of previous milestones doesn't mean that you cannot change them. You can change everything till the last minute. There is absolutely no problem. So that's that. And I've written over here tester program that essentially creates a, a box out of rewritable and prints it out. So it's kind of your workshop. <laughs> okay. So this rewritable thing is uh, showing how it actually creates and prints a box, uh, uh, reads it in comma separate. So again, the solution of what I'm asking for read writes to be is almost done over here in my main tester, in my unit test. And the children are supposed to do it the same way, which means they check to see if it is in a comma separated way, then they do it that way, otherwise they do it this way, and so on and so forth. So, and the right too. So for right, it's going to say width and height, or it's going to actually draw it. Okay? And uh, I created a series of testers to, to show you how it works, and I'm probably reading something from a file or something and displaying it. So uh, the, out, the outcome of the, of the uh, first part of milestone 3 is this. This milestone 3.1, 15 or 20 minutes. If you spend more time on it, it means you're doing something wrong. Because the functions over here are a query and a modifier. One is setting a Boolean, the other one is returning a Boolean. Then you have two pure virtual functions that are essentially just prototype, equal to zero. And to have two overloads that you have the samples in 50 examples that we have in it. So you should be done with this thing seriously in 15 to 20 minutes. Don't spend too much time on it. It's a very simple thing to write, OK? Like, if I'm looking at my, it's 18 lines in my code is the read write, and there is nothing special in it. And 19 line is in a CPP line, CP, uh, including the curly brackets and all the things. It's very simple, OK? <clears throat> and usually, interfaces are like that. Interfaces are designed by analysts that are lazy. They don't want to do programming. So other people implement the difficult things that they want them to be done, OK? So after this, you're going to create what we call a vehicle. So a vehicle module is supposed to encapsulate a vehicle that gets parked into a parking. OK? A vehicle is supposed to, if I can stick it over here, yeah. A vehicle is supposed to uh, encapsulate a, 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 a vehicle that can be parked in a parking. OK? So, uh, so you derive a class called vehicle from read writable, and we want it to be able to write it on a screen, write, read, write it in a file so that the, the parking attendants over there can list the vehicles, see which parking slot uh, the, the vehicle is parked in, or when a park comes in, it gets the license plate and stuff and assigns a, a parking slot and tells to the valet to actually get the par car and park it. So this is what it's going to do. So. Uh, I am saying when implementing, this is very important actually, and I keep saying that at all places. When you are creating functions, ask yourself, does this function change the owner? If it doesn't, make it a constant function, make it a constant member. When you are passing an argument, to ask yourself, does this, is this argument, is this argument passed by value? If it is, then you don't need to care about constantness. Because it's passed by value, it's going to get copied. Who cares? OK? If it's passed by reference or pointer, make sure you ask yourself, am I changing this? If you are not, make sure it's a constant reference or a constant pointer. Very important. 
So the attributes are going to have a license plate, one to eight characters, no dynamic memory allocation over there, you know that. Make and model is a C string of an unknown length, which means dynamic memory allocation. A parking spot is an integer with positive zero or positive integer number. That integer number uh, holds what is the parking slot that the car is being parked in. And these are the, uh, these are the uh, attributes of the, of the vehicle. Again, be organized when you create it. Make sure you initialize everything to be empty when the object gets created, even without a constructor like that. Any, diff, any type of constructor you create, you are sure you have a clean, empty, no garbage class to work with. <clears throat> so constructors, a no argument constructor, and uh, uh, a constructor that accepts license plate and make and model to create the vehicle. In that case, the parking spot will be zero. So if you create a vehicle, you enter the license plate and make a model. You say, I don't know, ABC123 and BMW something. It creates the vehicle, vehicle with those specifications and sets the uh, parking spot to zero. That means the car is not parked yet. Or no parking slot is assigned yet. You create rule of three to make sure it gets copied properly, assigned properly, and all the things that you have with the rules and specifications of copy construction and copy assignment. You already know all those. And the destruction to make sure it's not, in, it's not creating any uh, garbage in it. The side of a invalid, uh, safe invalid, uh, <laughs> Invalid safe empty state. Okay, when I say invalid safe empty state, it means something that you can identify the object is empty. It's not set. Okay, and it has no memory assigned to it. Nothing. So, yeah. So create a uh, set empty, and in that set set empty state, if I were you, I would wipe out all the memory and everything. So your set empty shouldn't blindly set the. Uh, set the uh, pointer to zero. First delete it and then set it to zero. So your set empty's job is not to be called in the constructor. Your set empty is to set the object empty in the flow of programming. Your constructor can simply you put, just put some curly brackets in front of it and it wipes it, it sets everything to null. You don't need to have set empty to that. Set empty really empties the thing. I would do it that way. Again, your choice. If you don't do that, you have to make sure that the dynamic memory is deleted before you set it to empty. OK? Get license plate. Uh, no explanation needed over there. It, it gets the license plate. Get make, make and model. Gets make and model. Set make and model and get uh, and uh, uh, set make and model and do we have get license plate? Do we have a set license plate at all? I don't think we do, do we? No, we don't. Yeah, set license plate only gets set using the constructor. Okay? So, yeah, so these are all queries that you are creating. And uh, I think these are, uh, we mentioned that these are protected methods. So, so I am not flagging it as protected over here. I will do it. But set empty, is empty, get license plate, get make model, and set make model, they are all protected because the children need to use it to set the stuff of the class. So these are supposed to be protected. Uh, I will uh, update it. So should I do it now? Let me just open it up. And uh, anyways, I'll, t I'll take a note and I'll do it later. I'm going to go and do it later. Anyway, so these are protected. OK? And 
operator assignment, you do it for two different things to, ch to see if two vehicles are the same, are identical, or to see if a vehicle's license plate is certain number. To, for two vehicles to be the same, their license plates must, must be the same. Okay? So if the li license plates are identical, the two vehicles are uh, considered to be the same. And for the uh, uh, for uh, comparison with a string, a C string, it, the, it should match the license plate. And make sure you store the license plate in an uppercase format. And if you don't know how to do it, go research for it. It's very simple. Uh, the code of one uh, lowercase is uh, the ASCII code of a lowercase uh, character is uh, higher than an uppercase character if you don't want to use the two upper or two lower uh, function. But to, low, to make something lowercase, all you need to do is to first check to see if it's alphabetic or not, which means if it's between A or Z or not. That's number one. If it is, reduce the code. If, if it is, reduce the code. And if it's lowercase, reduce the code uh, by uh, uh, the difference between an uppercase and a lowercase of a character. So go, da, go quote capital A, uh, sorry, uh, quote, do something like this. And I can't say it properly. It's easier to actually write it over here. So to have something as no item. If you don't want to use any, I think I gave you a utils file that has two upper in it. If, if you want to use that, fine. But if you don't want to just to tell you how you can actually do it manually yourself using your C knowledge, this is how you do it. So, <clears throat> so if you have a character, if this character is greater than or equal to A, and that character is less than or equal to Z, it means it's lowercase, correct? Now you need to make it uppercase. How to make it uppercase? Reduce the code. So you say CH minus equal. I don't know, let's go x minus x. That's it. It becomes lowercase. So to, for a character to become lowercase, you have to, you have to reduce its ASCII code <laughs> by the difference of a lowercase. And, uh, and that's, that's what. So that's for one character. You can put that in a loop. and. Do whatever you want to do. So first, you if if it is if it doesn't fit, you don't do anything. So I can actually do this. I can we can do this. We can call this to lower to upper. In here, I'm gonna say there. You go. That's two upper function. <laughs> If the character it doesn't fit into that thing, it does nothing. If it is, it makes it uppercase. And you can put that in a loop, and you're going to have uh, a string uh, becoming uppercase. So that's, that's two upper. Uh, so back in here. So for the read of a vehicle, what you do, again, as you saw in the example in the tester, first you check and see for the read of the vehicle. First you check and see if it is a comma-separated value or not. Then you read a parking spot. You ignore a character. You read the license plate up to a comma. And then you get the make and model. The make and model cannot be more than 60 characters. Assume that that the make and model cannot be more than 60 characters, but it must be kept dynamically, OK? You are not allowed to. You can remove that thing and get bonus marks, OK? Remove that 60K 
character is limit, but if you don't, it doesn't matter. So you can simply have a temporary local uh, string of 61 characters, read in that one, then allocate enough memory and, and keep it dynamically in the class. And that's how you do it. So if it's comma-separated value, you do it that way. If it is not comma-separated value, then you're going to show a message saying uh, <clears throat> enter license plate number. And then you have to validate that license plate number based on the validation that we have and you show them the proper message if it's wrong. Uh, uh, and this is a foolproof entry, which means if they put a bad license plate number, you should not let them go. Okay? They have to stay at the prompt until they enter a valid license plate number, whatever the valid uh, 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 specifications of a valid uh, thing is. So that's that. And yeah, that's it. Um, and you get the information and you're done. Uh, so again, an if statement, you have the sample in the unit test of the read and write, so you do it that way. Write type, it's a pure virtual method. What write type will do in future, in the next version, depending on what is the type, if the type is a car, it's going to print a C. If it's a motorcycle, it's going to print an M. Because we don't know still what it's going to print, we need to implement it then, therefore, write type is a pure virtual method and it's it has the signature of a write so you know exactly what it is exactly how writes write this one writes the type you have to again receive i stream return uh, return uh, receive o stream and return o stream in it but it's pure virtual it does nothing so if it's invalid, it prints invalid uh, vehicle object. If not, it print, if it's comma separated, it prints the, the information with this format, comma separated format that you see. And if it's not, uh, uh, it actually displays it in the uh, format that is uh, displayed in the output. So you can, you can see it over there. So the output over here shows exactly what it is. <coughs> So as you see over here, uh, it says parking spot is this, license plate is that, make a model is this. So it prints it as follows for if it's uh, not comma separated. Uh, you can see exactly what the uh, output is. <clears throat> and that's that. That's your uh, MS3 test, MS3, and your tester program is right there. Oh, the tester program, main.cpp, has the two testers combined in one file and it runs the whole thing. So you can test the read writable with its own tester and uh, the vehicle with its own tester when everything is good, then you can run uh, uh, main.cpp and it simply calls both of them and it is gonna be done with that. Um, today I'm gonna put milestone four up too so you can actually go through it and take a look at it and next uh, Monday we're gonna talk about that one. So any questions about uh, the milestone three? You look like a question, no? Oh, no. no? Question yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so uh, any other qu any question, uh, send a question to me, and I'm going to do another overview in the lab of the next class, which means on Friday I'm going to go through all the, uh, all the answers. And the next time you're coming in in lecture, you can ask the question too. We'll go through it. So today, the, the next time you're coming in, we're going to talk about classes with resources, derived classes with resources. Very simple. Okay, it's, that's like a 45-minute lecture, um, and uh, you're going to get it. Uh, the quiz is going to be online. I'll, get, I'll tell you, you're going to have time to do it by yourself at home and you, uh, whenever you want. You want to leave it open for like uh, uh, 20 hours or something, something okay? So you can do it anytime you want. Any questions? All right.